Welcome to a brief review of the posterior compartment of the leg. This compartment lies posterior to the interosseous membrane, the tibia, and the fibula. This compartment is divided into a superficial and a deep posterior group of muscles. There are three muscles in the superficial group. The gastrocnemius, which has two heads, a lateral head and a medial head. The soleus muscle, and last but not least, the plantaris, with its very long tendon, which is also referred to as the fool's nerve, because it is a muscle and not a nerve. Distally, these three muscles attach together on the calcaneal tuberosity via the calcaneal tendon, also called the Achilles tendon. The deep group contains four muscles the tibialis posterior, the flexor digitorum longus, the flexor hallucis longus, and the popliteus. The muscles of the posterior compartment receive their innervation from the tibial nerve, and they receive their blood supply from the posterior tibial artery. Note also that this is also where the anterior tibial artery arises to cross through the interosseous membrane to supply the anterior compartment of the leg. Soon after the anterior tibial artery has split off of the popliteal artery, a little further inferiorly, we can also see the fibular artery splitting off of the posterior tibial artery. The fibular artery is going to remain in the posterior compartment, but through perforating branches, it's going to be the one that's going to be supplying the lateral compartment of the leg. Let's recall at this point that we can refer to the gastrocnemius together with the soleus as the triceps surae. The origin or proximal attachment of the gastrocnemius would be the condyles of the femur, this is for the lateral and the medial heads, and the origin or proximal attachment of the soleus would be the proximal tibia and part of the fibula. The distal attachment, as I've previously alluded to, is on the calcaneus via the calcaneal or Achilles tendon. And even the skinny little plantaris muscle, or the fool's nerve, also attaches on the calcaneus, but it, just before it does so, it actually blends with the Achilles tendon here. The action of all of these muscles together is plantar flexion, so raising the heel when walking. When the knee reaches full extension, it actually locks. This mechanism is called the screw home mechanism, which is basically the result of a lateral rotation of the tibia on the femur. To unlock the knee, we will need the popliteus muscle. This is the muscle that internally rotates the tibia on the femur to unlock the knee. Once it's unlocked, then the hamstrings can actually pull because they're the primary flexors and they can then mediate the knee flexion. The tibialis posterior proximally attaches on the tibia, on the fibula, and along the interosseous membrane. Distally, it attaches on the inferior surface of the foot, specifically on the plantar surfaces of several of the tarsal bones. Flexor digitorum longus is going to proximally attach along the tibia. Distally, it'll have an attachment along the bases of the phalanges number two through five. We can already see that the tendon of the flexor digitorum longus, along with the tendon of the tibialis posterior, are coursing posterior to the medial malleolus of the foot. The next muscle is the flexor hallucis longus. The proximal attachment of the flexor hallucis longus is the inferior two-thirds of the fibula and along the interosseous membrane. The distal attachment, well, as you can imagine, because hallux is Latin and it means big toe, the distal attachment has to be on the great toe, and it will be on the distal phalanx of the great toe. If the muscle and the associated tendon will contract, 
the motion or the action that would be elicited would actually be plantar flexion of the foot and flexion of the hallux, the great toe. There is an important relationship of the tendons of the tibialis posterior, the flexor digitorum longus, and the flexor hallucis longus around the ankle because we can use a mnemonic which would be Tom, Dick, and Harry for the order of these tendons. If we now add back in the arteries and nerves, we would have Tom, tibialis posterior, Dick, flexor digitorum longus, the AND would stand for the artery, so the posterior tibial artery, the tibial nerve, and Harry would be the flexor hallucis longus. So this would be the order of the structures how we would encounter them on the medial aspect of the ankle joint. Thank you for your attention.